Can you hear me? I'd like to welcome you to our regular meeting on this day, April 5th, 2020. Let's stand, say the pledge, and then I'm going to clap. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. For the liberty and the justice for all. Thank you. What time? Yeah. I have not heard anything from Mr. O'Brien. Have you heard the mic? Right. 615. All right, so we know how it's going to be. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be Madam Chair, one thing, do you all want to have a, a little discussion maybe on your new business? I know there's, there's been some uh, discussion about trash. Yeah. And I've got a little something in my co ed report, but maybe a, a little bit more. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I definitely. Yes, we definitely need to, and I think it'll come up with VDOT. It, it will. And like I said, there'll be a little bit in my co-ed report. I think VDOT can touch on it, and then maybe we can have... Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So that'll be under new. Yep, under new business. Yep. All right. Can I have a motion? I'm going to be it has been moved by Mr. Speaker and seconded by Mr. Fairchild. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? They are both back. So three with two names. All right. We have county administrators for the board. So, Madam Chair, members of the board got a few things to report this evening. So, one got some new employees starting uh, with the county. So, Melanie Marsh. Uh, uh, started in the E911 E911 department. She started March 20th as a communications officer. Also, Patrick Robbins, also in E911, started April 3rd. And then uh, in the treasurer's office as a treasurer to Catherine McLeod started April 3rd. Um, so uh, Fluvanna Social Services is having celebrating ch uh, children's fair. Um, it's open to children, parents, and caregivers. It's going to be held at Carriagebrook Elementary School, Saturday, April 29th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And again, it's hosted by social services. Uh, there's free, uh, free and fun activities, giveaways, snacks, bounce house, face painting, balloon art, and lots of other local resources uh, for the community. So remember, uh, Saturday, April 29th, celebrating Children's Fair. Um, also, uh, coming up this weekend, um, Fluvanna County Parks and Rec uh, presents the annual Pleasant Grove Easter Egg Hunt again Saturday, April 8th, 2023 at 10 a.m. It's free for ages 12 and younger. And again, uh, please arrive early and hunt. Uh, the hunt promptly begins at uh, 10 a.m. Hunt ends when the last egg is found. And if anyone's ever been to the hunt before, it's it's done and over quick. It takes a lot of planning. It's over in probably a couple minutes. So just make sure. Uh, I think Parks and Rec does a good job of hiding the eggs. It's just, it's it's a free-for-all for plastic eggs and the goodies. So just uh, like I said, Saturday, April 8th at 10 a.m. Just be, be there early. Um, also, uh, let's see here. On March 25th, we held at Pleasant Grove Park the Hazardous Waste and Tire Collection event. From uh, 10, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. was the hazardous waste. Entire collection was 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So it was estimated that there are 118 vehicles that dropped off hazardous waste and 67 vehicles dropped off tires. Again, we think, as Mr. Spitzer said, rain, rain probably did play a part in it a little bit. Um, you know, it was definitely a little rainy and overcast to start off. So it was a little lower numbers than usual, but still a good event. Parks and Rec had budgeted 33 for the hazardous waste and 2,000 for the tire collection. 
Um, with the lower count, total money spent on hazardous waste was just a little under 14,000 and 1,800 on tire collection. Again, a special thanks to public work staff, Anthony Tanner and others, James Winsett, Mike Sharp, uh, Scott Breeden from Public Works for helping. Also thanks to Parks and Rec Department for the work as well. They did a lot of good work out there to organize it. I was out there slinging some tires with them in the morning. So it, like I said, it's uh, it's a, it, you definitely get your workout out there and that they do a lot of good work. So like I said, big kudos to uh, Mr. Spitzer and, and all those that helped. Um, the control burned in front of the sheriff's office. Little meadow field actually did happen uh, yesterday, April fourth, twenty twenty three. It was it was over and quick, pretty done, and uh, it was kind of a last minute notification uh, from from the Department of Forestry. Again, when the when the conditions are right for them, they they try and get it going. But again, it didn't take long. So you see here the picture to the right this is kind of the sheriff's and library complex and that big yellow highlighted area that's the kind of the meadow um, that the control burn was performed again the control burned or what, what the department of forestry calls a prescribed burn was done by chuck wright of the virginia department of forestry he had eight other uh, local foresters the burn started at 11 30 and it took approximately 1.5 hours to complete Again, we made all notification with homeowners prior. And again, there's a property owner that's near there, kind of by the bottom of the screen, and they were informed and they were well aware of what was happening. And here's just some pictures of, of what happens. Again, you know, through all the meadow areas, they, they in advance, they bulldoze a perimeter around there to prevent any type of fire from jumping from outside of the, the, the prescribed burn area. Um, but you can kind of see some of the different pictures of, of, the, of them performing the prescribed burn. And again, with it being springtime, I'm sure the field will be green and, and, and things growing up green within probably six to eight weeks there. So um, also, so on um, last Friday was, um, get rid of this, was uh, FCPS had a hands-on Fluvanna day. So um, Big kudos to the FCS, FCHS, um, SGA students who volunteered at the dog park on March 31st. They helped out spread mulch in the big dog pen area, pretty much where the grass area is gone. You can see right there. Um, they went and they spread about three cubic yards of mulch, and they did that from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 uh, p.m. Many thanks go out to the following FCH, SGA students, Juan Torres Sanchez, Rebecca Kraft, Artella, I'm gonna murder the last name. Gigi. Uh, uh, Gigi. Um, Sarah Beth Robinson and Allie Barnett. And also thanks to uh, Parks and Rec, Matt Stansel. He was driving the tractor and uh, spreading the mulch files around to kind of make it e easier on them. Like I said, it was nice for the students to get out and help on that day. Also on that day, we also had um, with some other students for the for the SCHS SGA, and we kind of had a big trash cleanup event on Route 15, Route 15 North as you kind of leave the county. So it was between Little Creek Road and Lake Road. Um, so this was kind of a, a big event between Parks and Rec, you know, kind of spearheaded, kind of organizing any, everything. Certainly we couldn't couldn't have done it without the help of VDOT. VDOT provided, I think, at least. A half dozen to 10 individuals to be out there that day. They also provided a truck and I'll show some pictures. Um, we ended up using a Fluvanna County High School resource officer to provide some, um, to provide some, you know, just some, some safety out there to close off one lane of the road. There was a state trooper out there. So what they did is, you know, like the, anytime they close a lane, they had like a, a, a chase vehicle or a traffic vehicle. I'm sorry, it's called a pilot vehicle closing the lane, getting everyone around. Um, and, you know, they had a, so that whole stretch is about 1.5 miles. So they start at Little Creek, went south down the Lake Road, and then they came back and went from Little Creek, from Lake Road north going back to, to Little Creek. So again, they did about three miles. Um, so the FCHS um, students that helped out was Christina Wright, Aiden Melton, uh, Valley, Alther and Kirsten Boykin. Uh, VDOT crews from Palmyra and Zion Crossroads also helped again. There was flaggers, a pilot truck for one lane closure, a, a dump truck, a crash preventer truck, and cleanup workers also that helped out. 
Um, Blue Anna Sheriff's Office helped uh, Deputy C. Allen for slowing and watching traffic for the cleanup crew safety. Also state police, as I said, were out to kind of slow traffic and Parks and Rec, Eric Armentrout and Aaron Spitzer were out there. And like I said, Mr. Spitzer kind of spearheaded the event and he was out there kind of organizing the whole thing. Um, and the, here, what, what's that? No, and here are just some pictures of the event. These, This is kind of the pictures. Everyone met up uh, right around on the glass property right there at the corner of 250 and 15 on the Fluvanna side. So you can see everyone, the students, VDOT, and Parks and Rec that helped. And you can see there's some uh, vehicles kind of stopped at the side. You can see everyone kind of going along that whole route. But they filled up about one kind of dump body truck right there with trash along that little three-mile stretch. And I think that's kind of some of the things about, you know, some of the later discussion too. You know, we were trying to find a good stretch to really get some good trash cleanup. And that was a pretty trashy looking area, especially coming into our county. So I know there's other areas too that we want to we want to address as well. And, and, and kind of going on top of that, and, and I said we can have the conversation with VDOT. Um, I had a conversation after our last board meeting with Scott Thornton with VDOT. So anytime there's there's any type of issues um, that that the county wants to report, whether it's a citizen, whether it's a board member, whether it's myself, you know, their mechanism for their mechanism for kind of tracking these things and kind of making sure things get done and they can plan more accordingly on VDOT's website um, through uh, Virginia.org. There's a, a little link on there. Uh, called report a road problem. And so that's for either you can go on there and you can make complaints about trash along VDOT's right away. You can make a complaint about banner signs or those little little uh, business signs that are in VDOT right away. If there's any damaged roads or anything like this, this is a way for whomever to go on and just kind of report these things to VDOT as they see them. Um, and once you kind of go to that link here, um, for some of this stuff, you know, you can go through and see what is most appropriate, but certainly from like a trash standpoint or the signs, you would mark other on that. And so if they get a, say, say for instance, if they get a lot of reports of a particular area, then they can try and, you know, kind of schedule their folks accordingly to make sure that they're addressing maybe the worst spots first. Um, and so, like I said, we can talk a little bit more uh, with Mr. Thornton about that, but we're going to certainly make sure we're using that a lot more, too, um, just because I've certainly, as driving around, we see some other sections of the county that don't look fantastic as well. And, and I think, too, they'll, as they're moving into mowing season, they try and get people out to pick up areas, too, before the mowing happens along the sides of the road. Yes. Student Government Association. Yep. Yep. And so before we move on, who, who, who thought of doing that on 15th? Like, where did that come from? You know, we, I, I think Mr. Spitzer and I, you know, we were just kind of talking about it. You know, once once we found out that SGA, they wanted to find some projects to do in the county. So as we've been talking about this kind of trash issue and we had some other things, that was one thing that, you know, as, as we were thinking about some things that, you know, would be a good thing to do, we kind of just kind of put the resources and the energy to kind of focus towards that. Um, me and Mr. Spitzer were talking about that. And then once we kind of determined a, a good location, because again, we drove around 250 corridor. I drove up to the 250 corridor, driving around 15, up and down 15. And, and that section right there, just, just from a visual standpoint, was, was kind of the we could we could see a lot of benefit of doing that section, but also too, you know, with everything involved, we wanted to make sure it was safe for the students involved. And then once the VDOT uh, residency found out kind of what the project was, they really put a lot of resources behind, you know, really making sure it, it was a safe event and stuff too. With with the sheriff's office, state police having, you know, the you know the pilot trucks and 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 the crash preventer trucks. So. So like I said, you know, it couldn't have been done on on, on our own. You know, there's lots of help to get that done. So yeah, and I hope that um, uh, the second base will get out and really yeah we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we're pushing we're gonna make sure we're pushing that that vdot site out a lot more for people to report issues and then again because uh, speaking with mr thornton they actually have two dedicated individuals to fluvanna county and not necessarily the two same individuals every day but they have two individuals um every day i think monday through friday that are dedicated to you know picking up trash 
you know, picking up trash bags? Is there, you know, dead animals, you know, uh, deer that, that were hitting the road? So that's some of the things that they do. And also, you know, are there, are there some of these, you know, temporary road, si road, road signs or banner signs that are in there right away as well? So, so that's kind of, kind of the process we're going through some of that. You know, I live uh, across from the convenience center, and I really haven't seen a lot of Japanese back there. But I know through Winfield, I, that was like somebody came there. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I, and I had a conversation with Sheriff Hess about this too, about seeing what we can do to, you know, maybe certainly fines make people maybe do things less if, if they get a fine for, you know, throwing out whatever it is, if they're throwing out beer cans, that's a whole different thing. But if they're throwing out trash or, or their fast food or whatever it is, um, you know, spoke to Sheriff Hess and then Sheriff Hess also kind of uh, cued in the, the 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 state troopers and the state police as well about trying to you know if they see anything enforce it. So anyway, some upcoming meetings uh, next week, April twelfth, we have a, a special. It's a board of supervisors special meeting, and really it's public hearings for the FY twenty four budget and the calendar year twenty three tax rate. Those are both associated with the budget and um, and the reassessment of the tax rate. Um, what, and then also after that time, if the board wants to have additional budget discussion, there's certainly time to do that. Um, Wednesday, April 19th at 7 p.m., uh, we have our regular meeting, and, and that is the time when we normally adopt the budget, and then as well as we have normal uh, normal regular meeting stuff. If for some reason that the board, we can't come to consensus on adopting the budget, we have April 26th as a backup for, for budget adoption. Um, but we'd have to call that in advance. But like I said, happy to answer any questions the board has at this point. You know, um, you know last time when we had it seven, we moved the next special meeting up to four and shut out or something at the last one. Well, this one, this one with it being more of a public hearing, we would have it here in the Performing Arts Center. And and normally and, and normally whenever we have public hearings, we have them at 7 p.m. too, just to be consistent. Yep. Um, one more thing. I know that uh, the park in Lake Monticello is in Houston. Yep. Keep the park open too. Was it last week? I couldn't go and not mean to it didn't open to the I don't see anyone coming off mute at this point. Um, yeah, I don't see anyone coming off mute at this point. No one online? Okay. Well, I'll close the third public comment. Right. We don't have a uh, public hearing. We're going to start with our eight. How to do prevention by proclamation by Rocky Reed. 
retired head of social services, he'd be asked to provide. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, and just let me know when you want me to go next slide. Um, so I'm Martha Reed. I'm a new man of county for social services. And to provide health protection and prevention. Um, I also have some of my workers here today. Um, Thank you. 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 Our vision is a community where individuals and families have access to support and protection, which promotes health independence and our community. So, in 2022 CPS referrals, we received 398 referrals, which resulted in 109 family assessments or investigations being conducted. Of those investigations, seven investigations were for sexual abuse, with four of those being founded for sexual abuse. And I, I put that in there because a lot of people think that these things do not happen in the county, but I want to let the public know that it does happen and we do investigate. Next slide. Family assessments are to be conducted within 60 days while investigation. Um, should be completed within 45 days, so we can suspend it if we need to gather more information. But it's not a record. It's not a record. Sometimes the hard to get the doctor off to the hospital in a family room. From the from the in doing the family assessment and um, investigation, we conduct safety assessments and risk assessments to see what we can get. If there was any one case that needs to be open with family support. This would have to stay a, long, a little longer with her. That could be anything from mentoring, um, parent coaching. Um, it could be helping someone with an electric bill or grocery. Um, just basically meet the needs of uh, the family, the basic needs of the family, so that we can um, hopefully not have the use of the electric occur in the home. Next slide. So, with our in-home and family support cases, we're mandated to be um by by time frame to be different um contact. Um our first our face-to-face -face contact is the main one that, that we may need to do. Those are done in the home with the family and if everyone in the household has to be seen by the worker, they have to be interviewed with the input that safety and risk. So in 2022, there were 618 faces in contact with. That does not count phone calls, that does, not, that does not count text messages, that does not count emails, that does not count contact with the service providers as well. So even when we work with a family, um, you're thinking, oh, we only see them once a month or after a year in communication and constant contact with that family the entire time they can be um, Like I said, most of the contacts are typically done in the home. Occasionally, we do meet the students at school with the follow up with them in their school environment as well. Next slide. As I was saying, we have different reports that we that the state um, follows them on monthly. Um, we do our best to make sure that we meet all of our mandates and all of our requirements. Um, at the central region, which we are as part of the central region, that's a quarterly supervisory meeting for convention that was held back in February. Susanna was actually one of the agencies that was highlighted for our high response into with our families and meeting all our mandates for our families. And so I thought that was a great um, acknowledgement. Um, I was proud of my workers for that because I didn't do it, they, they did it. <laughs> and that we all work together to make sure that we are, we are doing what is, what is needed to be done for the family. Next slide. As Mr. Bell said, we are um, hosting the Celebrating Children's Fair April 29th. Um, we haven't had it in a few years, so we are very excited about it. Um, so I'm just asking that you all please come out and support um, the Children's Fair. 
Besides what's listed, we have other things that will be going on. Um, the sheriff's office has um, confirmed that they will be doing digital fit fingerprinting. Um, we also have a magician that's coming. So there will be something fun to do in something for all, all, all ages. Um, and like I said, a lot of local resources will be there for people to learn about what is here in Savannah County that will help them in their place. So I want to thank you all for supporting social services. Are there any questions? Any questions? Please. No, thanks for your work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I hope we all may have back in the Yeah, I'm very Okay. I moved to Savannah County Board of Supervisors for three the month of April 23 to celebrate the Children's Month in Savannah County in observation of child abuse prevention. All right. We have a motion from Mrs. Gaber and a second from Mrs. Fairchild. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Fair both sides. Just one person. Thank you, Peter, for serving on the Social Service Board. On the hour of the joining my line of business, you oh. call that an owl. Yeah, that is an owl. So you can't see the hoop. I mean, that's what made the hoop. No, we can move it over. Oh, wait, I don't want it on this. Gently. We got it. Between, but you don't have an answer. We can we can Thank pull it all. we can pull it towards Mr. Fairchild a little bit. Thank you. Is that good? Perfect. That's bad. Thank you. Right now we will go to D. Authorization to advertise a public hearing for the VDOT secondary six year plan. Scott Thornton, VDOT presidential administrator. So, Mr. Thornton, which which thing you want me to pull up first here? Uh, dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Okay. What? What's that? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Basically, projects that were in plan could be um, out of the 91,000 that's coming in the uh, 15,971 shown going into district and future unpaid roads. And then um, the remaining uh, balance is 75,199 is going into this shown right now going into the county wide track engineering services. Um, they are only three qualifying roads um, in Savannah that are left for unpaid that would be Timber Road, Whitehall, and Old Fort. Old Fort Lane is already on the plan, set to be fully funded on the 25.6. Um, Timber Road has the um, highest traffic count of the unpaid road is 0.2 miles per 100 vehicles per day, and um, Whitehall Road is 90 vehicles per day, and that's um, Point six miles. So, um, if you wanted to add one of those two projects, you can do that today. Um, you have to get enough things together and read your plan, or we can continue to um, put those in the balance accounts until we get more money or if we want to wait on that. Uh, the other thing on the six year plan, South Boston Road, the 600, 618. If you look across that line, you'll see the balance typically. Um, is now showing at $1.9 million. Is that on page two? It is, yeah, on second page. Um, right there. And, yes, so what we did uh, this year is uh, look at all the inflation across all the smart sale projects and adjusted for inflation. So at the May CPD meeting, uh, the increase for $1.9 the CPD will vote on that to put those additional funds in this project. They're still doing the design phase. We're working on the maintenance of traffic plan right now and see what a public information meeting needs to look like for that project. But that's why if you're looking at the plan to show the additional balance, typically the 1.9 million to see the placement of the that we've seen in this project. Okay, what are they doing? So that's basically down by the at the bottom of the dam there, uh, by Blake Munchell Dam. It's it's a widening project right there. 
widening and turn lanes at, at, at that intersection. Yeah. What were those other two? Camera Lane and what was the other one? Whitehall Road. Camera Lane. I don't know where it's located. It's right on the beach. It's not your district. <laughs> <laughs> Some tells me Mr. Sheridan would probably know where it is. <laughs> Both of them are. Uh, the other one now. Um, yes, it's it's only uh, it's off of T fifty on the Ethan Harvey. Yeah, that's the other one. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Um, so the 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 map that we have, they're they're all all over. There's not one uh, problem location. So when we review the fatality, we really do look for those trends of is there one location where there's just they're coalescing and see if we can develop improvements for that section. Um, in our review, there's there's not one area that jumps out above any other across and for the Weezer residency specifically, but then as far as the district, mm -hmm. there's I mean there are higher volume roads for the most part, but and um, then and then so for Fluvanna, those nine, there's nothing that's like okay, well you have two or three at this one particular and they're sitting there they're kind of spread out, you know. It's notable to me when we talk about residential growth that they they've had more than twice the residential growth we've had in the past 10 years. They've had three times the fatal crashes. I mean, there has to be the, uh, some link to the growth of population and then having more crashes. The fact that they're now exceeding our numbers by so much is going to be more people there to experience that. Um, so if you go to the next slide, it's kind of breaks down the uh, fatality by month. Uh, you know, we're going to be seeing an uptick in the summer and in the fall. That's usually the high day when people on the road traveling, things like that. Next slide. So the next slide is the crash type out percentage. Uh, it's out of the top rate. People are running off the road and people are doing one of those things off the road. I'm not seeing any angle crashes. Um, they're not hitting things on the road at all, and we're uh, pretty low. Well, so it's, it's really runoff road type crash. And, and and I'm assuming probably the runoff road crashes are probably because someone's checking their phone. Um, that's a, another slide. So you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, next slide. Three is the twenty one for those uh, for that one. Again, this is these are district numbers, not evidence. Um, this is the bank number three, maybe the building total, things like that. So, I just think of a girl. Um, treatment factors for this is in here, um, you know, in speeding, um, distracted driving, and um, impaired driving. Uh, the distracted number in 2019 is uh, way high. Hmm. Um, you can see the distracted driving numbers have gone down significantly, which is a good thing. Um, impaired driving has gone up, which is, which is not great. Um, and the speeding is, is back up. So What's impaired driving? Drunk? Yeah, no. drunk or more. Uh, uh, sleeping is in the area. The percentage of fatalities while not wearing a seatbelt, this is when a seatbelt was an option. So, motorcycles, APDs, things like that would be compensated in a seatbelt. Um, 60, 50 to 60 percent. Um, so, you know, well, I'm here all the time, buckle up. I mean, the, the numbers are just, you know, you can crash and have your seat off on. You're, you're going to be a whole lot better than if you don't. Um, next slide. Age driver, um, 16 to 35 is generally where we're seeing the most crashes. Um, and then age is not wearing the seatbelt, uh, 16 to 25. Um, so, I mean, just again, great friends, double up. Especially our newer drivers, you know, see goals. I see the old people like me going pretty good. I would definitely have a little more caution. You can't drive uh, fast enough to kill anybody. I think I qualified as a new one. Oh, next slide, please. Uh, Residents and driver fault, um, not too many out of state. Um, outside town is generally. Uh, folks that are uh, running off road within the in county, uh, with drivers as well. Um, you know, a lot of this is uh, for the in county folks are getting their accidents at kind of places of the area that they drive in, and you know, they're way home, and they drive it all the time, and maybe they oh, it's going to make a quick trip or something. Um, so it's not just people that are from around me, although a large part of it is people outside of the county, but 
Um, it's also that number for folks that live there is very high. It's higher than just the by the folks. So then the last slide is just kind of crash trends um, and throughout the counties uh, within Culpeper District. Um, you can see Savannah, Queen, uh, Madison are all very well done with uh, with uh, serious injuries, fatal crashes, and um, fatal crashes there. Uh, Culpeper did have these people. Low numbers. So, in that vein, uh, one of the things we looked at and talked about this year in January was a distracted driving presentation that uh, they're right now they're doing it over in St. District, and we wanted to get involved with it here in Colorado. So, uh, we reached out with partner with uh, St. District and the THC over there. And we're doing the distract driving presentation. We reached out to the local high schools, uh, the Bantown Public Schools uh, wanted to do it. So we're doing two of those presentations in here. Uh, I think they're trying to get one full time this year. I'm not sure how that's working out. Um, but that presentation is just kind of a all day thing. We get our operations folks out, we get our six search control people in, um, and they do a presentation to just kind of talk about driving, how prepared it to go. And just, Hopefully, reach out to those new drivers and, and let them know what, what they need to look out for. Um, as well as well, talk about the you know, provide some assistance with alert pickup. That was a good thing. 35 ads. That was the final yeah. yeah. on that. So that was a mile and a half. That was a, it was a good pickup. And, and I want to really thank Scott uh, again for, for the resources. Again, once we heard that Flavana High School had, had a project they're looking for, and once we kind of put our idea to, to, to work. I mean, like I said, what we, what we originally thought were just going to be some, some signage and stuff like that. They really stepped up and really put the resources in there to, to make it a good safe event for all and, and get a lot of trash picked up in our, in our entryway into the County. So thanks. It was, it was definitely good event. Um, and then just play a couple of the slides that I had, uh, our search treatment centers are starting. The new proceedings happen this month and they will be working on search treatment um, latex, really remarketing things like that from them through the end of October. As we get our two people to head from the contractors, I'll be texting them along with that so we can always get them all aware of what I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Last slide. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, I, I'm pulling up here. There you go. It's, it's interesting. I, mean, I would have thought during COVID lockdown in 2020 21, I would have thought there would be different numbers. Mm -hmm. Actually, might be the other way. Yeah. Because you, you think on one side, people aren't driving to work with us, mm -hmm. right? But maybe they're just out and about more for the night. It was odd that in one of the agencies, really everybody yeah. expected the same thing and say why for those numbers. Well, and the thing is, I remember Sh Sheriff Hess said before during COVID, people were speeding a lot more. So yeah. I guess if people are speeding a lot more, that would that would make sense that people are potentially running off the road yeah. more too. And so, oh, I had a question about uh, when you all when you are speeding, you don't have to advertise small yard signs and Do you take those up? And take them back to the, uh, what you, are you destroying them? Yes, we take them back to our area controllers, and what they'll do is they'll try to call the uh, the advertisers mm -hmm. and let them know they you know, get the signs, please don't do it. Okay. Um, what we find is a lot of these vendors, um, they have you know, smaller parties come up to the signs up, and they'll, you know, they don't even know where the signs go. So, you know, if I have a business and I give you know, somebody 500 signs and say, I'll pay you 200 bucks to go put these out, I may not know exactly where they go. Um, so they'll say, okay, sure. And then literally we'll pick them up, say on a Friday, and by Monday morning, the signs are back up. But ultimately, um, it's, but it's. We do call them, and, and you know, it, it, it just. It's a constant. Is there, is there a fine for 
Any other questions? Well, I just yeah, I've got short enough time for one closed session, but I don't want to stay down this too long. But we have talked about, I think, last board meeting how chronic that's become all the time. And I sent him the picture of of like yeah, turkey sag as an as, yeah. as an example. It's terrible, and you know, just um, with all the trash conversation, it's just part of the trash. It's become you know, and and um, it's like we're a free fall. Like there's no limits to keep people from doing it. It's just more and almost every day. And I'm starting to hear about it a lot. And um, I guess it comes down to other than so how do you all decide when you pick them up? So they've been out there for a long time. We so if we get a, a call like the, the picture of in uh area where it's a certain area, we need to you know, schedule your crews to go out there and get them. Um, and what I asked them to do was you know, go out, pick up the signs, mark them, do whatever you need to call people. And then that way, a lot of times on the back of the sign, people put like a number, and that's how the gun you know to the head. And so we've got the same person to try to figure out who that is and call to them. Um, we've had an instance where literally our crew just picked the sign up, drove down the road, turned around, came back, and signed the down without like, putting another sign up. So is there any they talk to one you know, like, so to that point, is is there a how how what would be the process to to have come to the legislature to get a penalty in place for repeat offenders? I mean, at some point. Yes, we have an Because because you'd think that would be almost littering to a degree. I mean, if if something's going in someone's property in again the v dot right away and it's something that's not authorized well they've got all their contact information on there you think it would be easy to 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 pinpoint who's doing what and and ultimately if they're giving the signs of someone i would think the business owner's responsible for that sign ultimately well i would think that that i would think you could prosecute them for trespass trespass yeah but that well the, if it's in the right of way I'm talking about only what's in the right of way, because that's not allowed as a matter of law. Uh, the the sheriff would be the one that would be responsible for enforcing it, and I wouldn't do it without talking to the Commonwealth attorney. Second is it's got to be maybe it's just come down to our ordinances, which I think we said we're going to review more or something. But we we can't we can't control that. In the, in, in the beat out right away, we can't control that. Uh, and to what you're saying about the, they just so backed up, like the ones that are paid by Stanley Martin and Southern Development and so on, I've seen them come right back out a day later and they put it up. And I've, I've literally seen them put a ladder against the pine tree, go up, screw it to the pine tree, and then put Vaseline all over the back of the sign. So when you try to rip it off, you get Vaseline all over your hand. Liberty did that. So it just gotta be something eventually we can do to keep you from approaching on other people's property and literally literally literally. Well the one thing you could do is you could shame the people. So yeah, you well, <laughs> you might well what I was thinking of was something like let the board invite the frequent flyers to come and, and explain why this is happening. And I think Mr. Thornton would have he made the kind of presentation he just made here and have them explain why this is happening, what can they do to prevent it because it is illegal. So he would have to initiate that yourself? Well, he, he's the one that has the information. Yeah. Did you say that there is something underway to around the lake to clean them up? Like the turkey sag and mm -hmm. yeah. So what we do is we had uh, what we call it, we had an important road problem. We try to you know, schedule our work on where those things are going up. Obviously, it's safety related. They'll go right to it. Um, we do have staff that assign two a day. They're usually um, you know dead end pick up sign trash like right side of the deck. So the way mattresses and things like that on the road, um, you know, in spot areas that get called in. 
And then also, if you want to prove out there on the right, we could do a tray. If they're in a work plan and doing that, you know, something else, they have a tray on that. Um, how my area is ordered, we fill up one more lot on the tree. That's not like a star. So you do, I mean, that's not that's not stuff that goes directly to the dump that we pick up on the dump truck. That's just what we pick up and come by the river. I had a citizen this morning called went from the fire department and just about crashed and said, um, Well, doesn't VDOT see that all that trash line? Well, it sounds like I was happy to hear tonight that you all do see it and that crews if you can specifically dedicate it to getting it up. Well, then it's a big camera. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're happy to help out with, with these things. We do have um, mowing getting ready to start up next month, so we have contractors that go out in advance of the mowing and we pick up the trash. And so we don't pull it all everywhere and all over the properties. And, and I'll give you an example. I just saw mowing happening around the roundabout. Um, down there the other day and I didn't see it didn't appear that trash was getting picked up because now that the mowing's been done I see I see chopped up trash spread out even more and smaller so uh, one uh, citizen suggestion I don't know if this might be not, was wondering about posting signs that just say something effective Here's what the fine is for this. I don't know if there's people trying to so we can pass the ballot. So, uh, um, we talked about that. There was actually a guy put out um, from our front office when we were there to see the sign. Um, we, we could post a sign in parking areas if we have an area that, that has that, but we do not have to find them. So we can post the you know, sign of the DNA line for this. But there is nothing on top of but there is no there may be on the English well the reason I suggest trespass is, is that's a common law crime so it, it it's already the law of the Commonwealth that doesn't have to be in VDOT's regulations yeah but, but what Mr Thornton said he made it sound like if the county has a fine for throwing out litter so there's 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 kind of I guess there's two things I'm hearing there's there's, Sometimes families have an additional fine on top of it. Okay. So we have law enforcement. I believe they can write a fine for it. If there's some localities that have a higher fine for that. So, what do you think? So, do we have anything in motion for and the suggestion of calling out these who have been doing these and we haven't done anything more? Right. No, I, you know, I think that we need to um, educate the community. I mean, we need to get out of school the community and have to know what we're dealing with now. We're going to review, we'll probably do something. Why can't we um, do an editorial or something and have them and we talk about it? Um, we can put signs up and post on the people standing out to church to put on broken doors. Um, we have enough people around the corner about friends and just different kind of friends. Um, I, I, I don't want to take away from anything that we did the other week, but you might be on 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would say I clean my road department on 53, and next week I'll have a full bag again. And I think it's most of the stuff that's not getting so yeah. it's blown out of the back of the truck. Right. Most of the stuff that's and a lot of it's not too bad. You can see that it's kind of good. I think it's probably a combination yeah. of both, but there's a lot of it. And I think I think the one thing that would deter people is if it hit their pocketbook. That's only fine for a little five hundred fine. But that's no more. We don't post the sign. So I'd say even if we need to do this another meeting, I don't want to be while Scott's here, but if it's next meeting, I'd say let's fairly immediately. Yeah, we have a conversation. So we can talk more. All right, any more questions? I just wanted to commend Scott to the um, down garden lane. People are going, ends up the GPS to take people all the way to the gate at, at Jefferson Drive. BS things you can get through, and you got you know, uh, big trucks sometimes having to try to back all the way up. And if 
backing into people's yards and make my jello, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he quickly put up a sign after the citizen requested him more. And uh, then turn around. So, no outlets. No outlets. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, we did the motion before. We did the motion, then we had the additional discussion on something that was not related. The small purchase fee will be um, increased by $200,000 uh, in the lead of gold uh, in the um, five years of policy for not to be approved. It has a limit of $100,000. Okay. There will be a uh, change to the number of floats required for the vehicle. Uh, zero to 5,001 floats, greater than 5,032 floats, greater than 30 to 50,003 floats, and greater than 50,000 to 200,000 vehicles on the New York floats. Reason is due to our high demand in the county of having a great difficulty to purchase the park. The county has attempted numerous times um, to use the state contract and swap to the agreement to buy the I want to be told that we must pre order only for the next year available or not available at all. The county also issued an ISD for the vehicle in late 2022, and we had no response from the individual. Um, likely, the vehicles are often sold, but we will have the ability to be much the same. It's worth on the effort to respond to the county of the location. Um, this would um, provide other avenues for purchasing of the vehicle. The county has a CIP funding for the vehicle purchase in 2022 and 23 and desire to use the bond financing to be that to expire on July the 1st, 2023. So again, just for this one, all we're doing, we already have a policy in place. Right now, it's currently 60 to 100. The only thing that's changing is right there in red. It's it's 60 to 200 for vehicles only. That's the only change to this piece of the purchasing policy on, on that section. Section two and three are, are just their state code clarifications, nothing major there. And then and then you want to talk touch on section number four, Donna. The formal written contract requires that all contracts $2,000 more than the Virginia public insurance grant specifically requires a written contract with a specific provision that uh, any contract $2,000 or more. Currently, a formal written contract is required for, for a payment of the contract in an amount of $3,000 or more. Um, the attachment of attachment A is one page of the purchase order form recommended not required for all of the small purchases from five hundred to two thousand dollars. Yeah. So again, just this currently right now for any anything technically over three thousand, we have to have a contract. This is moving it up to ten thousand because. Honestly, a lot of the jobs that we do for things, I mean, three thousand dollars is is really in the grand scheme of things is, is a small amount and a lot of public works projects are easily above that. So doing a contract for that something has to go to the board for everything below three is 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 not efficient. So so those those are the changes basically changing the amount for what we can buy for vehicles and then changing the, the contract amount for what needs to come to the board. So any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Motion. For the board supervisors to the amendment, the small purchasing policy is set out on the proposed amendment 4.4 small purchasing procedure. All right, we have the middle amendment to the paragraph. second amendment to the speaker. All in favor? All right. Anyone opposed? Fair vote. Sorry. Okay, the next one is the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank Debt Association. 
So, so I'll handle this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll handle this. I'm trying to get through it quick. So, so again, we took out debt proceeds to buy a lot of equipment. And so, you know, we got a fantastic rate. Rate was great. We had an 18 month spend down on those proceeds. The one thing that we've had with supply chain issues on the vehicles and things like that, we think we can move forward and we can get everything done by the August 30, August 3rd spend down date. Um, if there's a couple that we maybe have some issues with, we may be coming back. But the one thing we know for certain is there's some money for a public works building. Again, the money wasn't necessarily enough to finish the whole thing when it was originally approved. You know, again, as, as everything you hear, cost increases and things like that. So there's additional money in fiscal year 24. Basically, to go back to that, there's no way we're going to get this 93000 spent by August 3rd. So what we're recommending is to do a flip-flop of some CIP projects. Again, the Sheriff's Office has vehicles in the current budget this year for fiscal year 24 that we're currently considering. What I'm what I'm suggesting is move some Sheriff's vehicles up for, for right now, if the board approves this, and move the money that we are gonna spend to do the, the storage building, move that out as part of the FY24 budget. So it's really a, a flip-flop of, of, of the, the spend of those, of those dollars. Um, so again, 93 was budgeted for the, for the storage building. Um, the sheriff spoke, spoke with Sheriff Hess. He's got a quote to get two vehicles and the cost of that is 101,000. So again, the, the 101 is more than the 93 that I'm requesting, but we've earned interest on those proceeds sitting there too. I think we've got probably around, as I'd last checked about 30,000. So what I'm what I'm requesting is flip-flop them. The 93 would be a wash, but we would increase the sheriff's um increase the sheriff's amount from 93 to 101. And I'm not sure if that if that makes sense. Um but we're again what we're trying to do, we're trying to make sure we don't have to give any of these proceeds back. We want to utilize them. We got a 1.3% interest rate on these proceeds and we want to spend them all down. Since, since we took out took them all out. We got two motions. Move the board of supervisors to pull the budget tanks on a fiscal year 22 staff new debt proceeding in amount of 19000 The public works equipment storage building to ask the sheriff's office to pull the budget. I'm grabbing second. All right. Whatever motion. Second. I move the board supervisor to approve a supplemental appropriation of $8,000 for the sheriff to the staff and budget. For such funds to come from the current interest in JP Mortgage's. All right, next we have E, and he is on his way. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm here to give like an, an update on the status of the light from the 22 CIP for the athletic field. And let me just make one comment before we start. This project, these proceeds were also included in those debt proceeds, and they have to be spent by August 3rd as well. The next slide. So for our soccer field, we're going to need 10 fold lights. We would like the soccer field, and it's six hundred eighteen thousand four hundred twelve dollars for just the soccer field. So and then in the CIP, we were given six hundred eighty-five thousand dollars to do this project for all the uh, all the fields out of the growth. But we're not going to have enough money as we're going to see there in a second. So the next one would be the salt, the soccer, the softball field. So the softball field still needs five lighted poles to work. Um, it's $175,578. So, and then the next slide oh, this is the parking lot. So the parking lot, the board approved $50,000 for this project in June 2022. So this is not, I'm not, this is already money that we're going to use, but I'm going to take one of these light poles and put it the softball field for the parking lot. If that makes sense. And that's not going to be any added. 
Any added value? I mean, you can do that. So you have one. We'll have the one on the top side. Oh, yep. We'll have that one for soccer parking, and I'm going to take the bottom one and put up top for softball for the softball field. Assuming, because, assuming, assuming the, assuming assuming the, the board approves the money for the softball. Field. Yes, but, sir. you're going. Um, we saw a need that we were missing that light up there if we we're going to park cars with the field light. So I did talk to Musco, and they're able to do that. Multi light bulbs and multiple bulbs. Yes, they will. I think they're each got six to eight bolts on these bolts. So it's enough to light right there where they would park. And it's shorter than the distance from pole to pole. So it's not going to cost anything. So the poles are out there. Not yet. Okay. No, the poles are at a uh, store. It's somebody's uh, store uh, shop that they're going to be putting them up. The people that got the contract for the $50,000. Um, next slide. <laughs> So, and as I said, the FY22 budget, the FY22 budget, there was 685000 to put in the flight. We got a quote from Moscow with the uh, GMU base up contract, which is a cooperative contract for a state contract. And it was $108,990 over the money that I had. So it came out to, I think it was, I had. Seven ninety three. Yes. Seven eighty three. So what I'm asking is for the board to take money out of the fund balance to so I can finish the project for the softball like, because I don't have enough. Or I just do the soccer field and not the softball field because I have enough money for the soccer field. Do all of the soccer field? Yes. And the reason I would do that is because we already have a lit baseball and softball field out here. So that would give us a lit soccer field. No, no, my question was do all of the soccer fields, like it's three soccer fields. They do because they're running out of practice time. There's more kids and you get into the spring and the fall and you lose your daylight. So they have to stop practicing up there. They only have an hour. And if we would light them all, then they often practice until 8, 8.30. Uh, I, I thought about that question too, but I would assume, correct me if I'm wrong, because if you went some of the soccer, they're different sizes, and then and then went down to okay, that's good. The, the, also, we have a big field, which is our Bermuda field, which is like a regulation. We have the middle field is usually split into two for the I think the U12, the U10, and then we have on the first field. It's top one. It is up a little bit, and then we have a couple little goals for U6. So they're a little, really small fields. So the way we line all the lights up is to be able to light all of those for everybody. They, they don't all practice on the same field. So it's all different. So there's a difference. But if you did some portion of that, somebody would get left out. And then went down. There's not enough money, I'd imagine, left to go still down to the softball field. In other words, it, it's, it would be more expensive to do some portion of this when you still have such long trenching to get down the yeah. softball field. Yeah. And the softball field is going to come off from the top down and then they're going to meet at a junction box. So there's, there's, there's a, the power kind of middle, the close field. It's, it's down there on the bottom of the zip golf course. There's a power box right there that we're, we're, we're updating. And there's one right behind the soccer field. Right but because they've been asking, yeah. yeah. So that, that so that to, to do, all, I would imagine this is what I said to them. I would imagine that to do all. Let's say we don't take the rest out of front. Mm -hmm. That to do all of the soccer fields would be less money than doing a portion of soccer fields and then running down and doing the softball. Yeah, I'd have to ask them. I'd have to get a new quote for that. But yeah, I think that. I mean, if you're splitting up some, so I don't, I don't know how I could go. I would have to ask about that. So how did we, was there so much time in between when we did the original and then when we got the pricing that, how were we that much? Older? And well, some of it was like, they, so Moscow, the, whoever they contracted with, they, they said that that person was a little bit higher than what they thought was going to be, even with the state contract. And we got the best deal we could with the state contract. 
and, and if I remember correctly, we we're really getting the lights for free. Well, the the parking that's to the parking lot. lot. They, yeah, they were the ones that had the parking. Yeah, remember the, this. Remember this one right here for the soccer fields, and this here for the softball fields. There's no donated lights for that. So that that it was, was just that was just a CIP project. You know, Mr. Spitzer got an estimate some year some years ago when he was going forward. We took out debt financing to 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 do a bunch of things, and you know, as you've seen with everything, price increases have 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 affected a lot of projects. So that's that. We originally had 685 to really do these two portions. It's like 793 now. But this one, the lights were donated for this, and the board approved the 50,000 to install the lights for this. So this piece is basically covered right here. It's just the, the soccer fields and the, the, the softball field that, that was a CIP project, that there's not really enough to do that. And it's quite lights and softball. I'm, I'm sorry, say one more time. You didn't put lights in the softball field. You wouldn't put the lights. No, no. no. Because it wouldn't be in a meeting. Yeah. So what was the original approval? 685. 685. Oh, it was um, J July 1, 2021. 20, yeah. Yeah, because it was part of the fiscal year 22 budget. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, I imagine it's more expensive to have them come back down the road. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if it'd be any deeper than uh, 120, 175. When it, you know, 176 is now, it's going to go up. I would, I would assume. So why, why the softball field and not the baseball field? We have not had any. Too much heat. Well, thir we don't have a 13 year old Babe Ruth League in the cap. And that's what that field's for. It's a 300 foot fence. It's made for kids to grow out of this field for the next level, and we don't have that. So while to me that's a waste of money right now, we don't even, you know, they practice on it. The kids don't move the bases, and they'll practice on it. They don't play up there, and that way softball has another place to play in the evening. And if we had to yeah. baseball, we kind of use that field if we had to for something. Like if we had a tournament, you know, maybe they needed that field for. A night for a tournament, and we could put a you know portable mound out there, and they could use those fields. Now we have we have two motions, and the first motion, I mean, the second motion is appended from meeting with A, B, and C on the left. Well, yeah, so so motion so, no, yeah, motion number one. So so if the board says we want to do all three, the, right. the soccer field, the, the softball field, and the parking lot lighting, it's it's the, the dollar amount's 843990 If the board says we don't want to go above the 685, well then you're 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 really you're really only choosing A and C because yeah. we don't have enough money to do B then. So you don't make you don't need to make well, I've only got soccer players in my district. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should do it all. For the for the I mean, I just, I ultimately, if, if the demand is there, we're trying to, the purpose was to bring light into the field to increase use to make it more available for tournaments and attracting other people. Um, uh, other organizations have to do so. Uh, ultimately, if we're doing that, then we proceed one to light all the all of the facilities there. And I just imagine that the cost of light and softball you know, three, four, five years from now, instead of just kind of seventy five thousand dollars a year, so we can spend a little bit more. So, and I think what's not like that that you can expect, but the company will say, well, why aren't they like how much use does the softball field go? Every day. It's in, in their season. So they'll practice two. You try at least they try to get like two practices in right now, probably with the light, because they can practice about 7 30 without you know, not being able to see the ball. They have two short practices because of light, and then once the, the sun is up, we'll try to make it two. 
And this way they'd be practicing about nine o'clock at night usually, I think is what they do out here with the lights. So they give them enough, like especially in the fall, you know, after September, there's probably no practice. So it's dark at six o'clock on the six thirty. And then we have an opportunity to practice. Uh numbers are notably going up again and um both that all the athletics right? I believe went up soccer, baseball, and softball went up this season. And, and just knowing softball more, I mean, there's a time when you need to send kids to Greenland. And if you're there, there's a great deal of going to go. And I think the program is getting back to where it seems that the they, I think they told me they even tried to maybe move to the baseball field at the middle. We could say that to me about other options. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're, they're certainly hitting the ceiling. Where I, I mean, I don't have those four fields. So if they're not lit and there's only a certain amount of time, you can use them. All right. Okay, let me let me I'll make a motion. Well, 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 sure sure you um, I, I would agree that let's do A, B, and C. Oh. I think that when they're playing the ball, you're not looking at yourself. So, right. plus two. Right. 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 Yeah, I'm great. Right. 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 I know the board has provided the proof that they will take 2022 to purchase sort of the contract number UCPJMU 6542 and participation in the must go sports play. We have a time for the following A soccer field lighting project for $618,400 per offer to purchase B softball field lighting $175,500 as a co to purchase C parking lot light project lighting project for Fifty thousand dollars at the sole source purchase. Only one source was available for lighting at Pleasant Grove Park for the total amount of six hundred. I'm sorry, eight eight forty. Total amount of eight hundred and forty-three thousand nine hundred dollars. And further authorize the county administrator that the first order agreement for all of the products for that subject to approval after the form by the county attorney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're motion. 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 Chris, all right. Motion number two. Okay. Uh, let me ask you. I'll make the addition. I'm with the board's advisory for the supplemental appropriation $108,990 from unassigned fund balance for the FY22 CFP for the present road that's going to be the project. I'm going to ask you. Do you want to ask you? Yeah, we, uh, they should be done by August 1st. So we're going to try to start in June. It's uh, 12, I think, eight weeks to get the equipment in. Um, it's needed to be done by August. So they said they'd be done by August. We, we had in the contract, it's got to be done by August 1st. Okay. So we're going to start June, 1st of June. So soccer should be over, softball's almost over into their. You know, their um, playoffs all star, so they should be perfect time and then we're ready to go to the ball. All right, so Mr. Fairchild made the motion. Mr. O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien, second all favor. Fair both sides. Good. Thank you. Now, let me have your attention for a few minutes. Please. We got presentations, two yeah. presentations. We can go quick. do again being in this space i mean we go back to we have we have time constraints in this space and really the old the earliest we could be in this space is 4 30 from 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 kind of cross um you wouldn't have everybody here 
session during regular meetings after the yeah meeting. so i mean i don't i don't i would never want to get in the way of for the time thing if, if we meet about something we only get to talk about it once then it's worth a robust discussion then we just got to talk about it but i think during budget season is a big issue because of filing on a budget work session and on the regular meeting that we do something during the uh, budget season. We do our uh, budget work at a different time or something. Let's just think about it. I don't think we can change the maybe since we only have the, the end of April to finish the budget part of it, and that happens during budget season, maybe we postpone that for another. Somehow or another, we put it for another time that it comes up this year to prepare for next year's budget season. Um, how we can maybe schedule different. I, and I don't know if those answers would have to be there. Yeah, I just feel that it needs to be done. Now, we do it, it needs to be done. We, we'll put our heads together. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it before, and, and, you know, we certainly realize that, you know, we're just, we're tight. You know, if we're in this space, we've got a time constraint, and then so we really can get people here early, maybe a half an hour early, but is, is a half an hour gonna, gonna change things a lot? And then if we do get a half an hour early, is that gonna work for everyone's schedules to get everyone here at that time? So that's... Okay. Yep, certainly. Okay. And next presentation, do I heard the Vivian, Calvin, Hickman, who is our director of public work? Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> um, happy to announce that partnership with the Savannah County High School Carpentry Shop and then the Public Works Department to do that. Timber Frame Pavilion up to do the library, the uh, carpentry shop, the design and build all the material and supply all the material. Mr. Paul Terrico, who knows the apartment shop, which is part of the And then uh, we'll come out and erect it in the public works department to supply the buildings and the uh, metal roof for that. And you can see, can you go back to more? Go back. Right there, you can see that drawing. You can see the little yellow spot. But yeah, that's where we're proposing to put the building. And this is the library building right here. So you can uh, see it from the parking lot and get the inside building. It's 16 by 24. At this point, we are not going to establish a wooden there won't, an option could be a wooden floor or electricity into the future. At this point, we're not doing that. We're just going to put wooden zone in the back of the building. Uh, Mr. Jericho's class this year wants to do the work. They've already put all built all the components. And so, you know, high school doesn't last for the end of May. So, we want to go fly up to the new direction. So, you can see a resemblance of the building. This is one with, that they have built over in the Woodham Park over next to the high school. This one is 16 by 16. It does have a wooden floor. We can turn two of those. And they make their own wood, right? And the wood is still made. They've got the wood mill. And again, from the county, the expense would be the footers and, and the metal, all the wood components. They they obviously, they provide that there, but there's some costs of county, which we're not requesting funds. It could be covered out of public works, existing budget. And this is just kind of a, just some different looks of, of, of an example of, of one that they've done. Yeah, here, we're doing the same thing. 
spectrums are gradually. You got that on the county agenda as well. Uh, I have roads with the ball. See if we can have a partnership somewhere with the high school. Like I have a table in there, and so people go out and read it. Exactly. People, like people in libraries, could go outside and have that and read your book, or people that are hiking on the trail to go in there and do the lunch and stuff. There's right at parking lot. People can very easily walk up to it. I can envision the benches, the under benches on the inside, and people sit down. I can envision electricity, you can put a light out there, a wooden floor. It could be a small event. And we, and we could see these types of things, you know, maybe every year they do one, maybe it's, you know, adding some additional ones at Pleasant Grove Park too, you know, there's discussion about that as well. And do you yeah. yeah, I'm just going to go through this quick. There's there's a, some 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 comparison revenue calculations we're still working out, so we don't have that for the board. But again, we just kind of want to give you a brief overview of, of solar, and then but but we may want to come back with something at the next meeting. So one under our uh, amended county code chapter 22 zoning, so a solar generation facility utility scale. Is a solar energy conversion system producing two megawatts or more of electricity? So again, that's in that's in county code, two megawatts or more of electricity. So in in Virginia, there are two ways, and and localities need to choose how they're going to, um, uh, I, I guess, tax to a degree um, solar generation facilities. So one, the first threshold is that a solar generation facility has to be five megawatts or greater. So the options are there's the default option is for counties to lev levy a machine, machinery and tools tax and real estate tax on the capital investments of the, of, of the facility. Second piece is a locality may adopt an ordinance to replace the M&T tax, with, with, which is called a revenue share agreement. Under this model, localities get income from the solar facilities at a flat rate of $1,400 per megawatt per year. And generally, these types of agreements go into place for, you know, I think 30, 35 years is, is, is the time that it would go into place. So, you know, if you had a, you know, you know, whatever it is, whatever, you know, a megawatt facility it is times 1400 per year, that's, that's the revenue you would get per year. Now, every locality is different because every locality taxes machinery and tools. They have de uh, different depreciation schedules, whether it's, you know, you know they, they depreciate a certain amount per year. They have different um, periods that they only tax things. So for instance, like Fluvanna County, M&T is depreciated at 25% year one. And if you remember um, from what the commissioner uh, spoke about, we only tax those for 10 years of their life of being in service. Some localities may tax them for, for as long as they're in service forever. Some of them may not depreciate them as much. So these are kind of the, the kind of the taxing methods. And again, by choosing this doesn't mean that we're going to approve any types of facilities. This is just kind of the selection model that if we approve one, this is how we would tax those types of facilities, whether it's called a uh, a revenue share agreement, or if you want to call it an energy tax, or you do just a regular default machinery and tools real estate tax. So we are currently, we had some conversations, I've had some conversations with VACO, I had some uh, conversations with the commissioner. We're still trying to work out some of the financial um, comparisons to really get a get a good gra grasp, because it's, it's complex and there's lots of different there's lots of different depreciation things that are involved with this as well um, for how it's depreciated. And, you know, there's also things too, once it gets in, let me see if it's in here too. Um, let me go back. Um, shoot. Anyway, th there's some differing models too, based upon the size of megawatt facilities they are. So again, if, if it's five to 25, those are, those are taxed and assessed based upon the locality. 
if it's greater than a 25 megawatt facility, those, um, those facilities are then determined what the value is based upon the State Corporation Commission. And the State Corporation Commission then assigns a value to those
How about now? Yes. Yeah, it's registering now. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Cindy, are you still there? I'm here, Callie. So, how clear is it when I'm talking? So I can't. I can barely hear you now. We think it's coming through the owls now, rather than through the microphones that are sitting in front of them. Now you're louder. So if you're moving around the owls, yeah. You're just sitting still. I lifted my head up a little bit, so maybe that's it. And the picture's gone too. Yeah, I stopped the share. Um, oh, okay. So I have to figure that part out, but well, maybe I can do that. Uh, oh, look, I did it. Um, I, I never do this part of it, so I never know. What's I know. Okay, well, for now, I think that's what we got because I, I just, Andy's on vacation, so I can't troubleshoot. I know. Tim was here briefly, but he left. So. <laughs> Shoot. Anyway, okay. I can, I can definitely hear Eric, so I think that's probably better than not anybody else. And I, and I think the others will, will just have to... Oh, the mic let them know that it, it's the owls and not the microphones in front of them. So maybe they'll speak up a little bit more. I know, I know you won't have any trouble with Mr. Sheridan, Mr. Fairchild, or probably not even Ms. Booker if she's aware, but we'll mention it to Mr. O'Brien and Ms. Eager. So, all right. Well, thank you, Cindy. I'm going to mute it here so that we can. Yeah. Thank and, you. Thank you. Okay, is it registering now when I'm talking? Yes. Yeah.
the no video? There, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I had, I had to take you out. Okay. 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 All right. Madam Chair, I move to close meeting via adjourn of the Savannah County Board of Supervisors convening in an open session. Thank you. Thank you. All the Board of Supervisors does hereby certify to the best of each member's knowledge. One, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements under Section 2.3 of CSR 11A of the as amended, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by Mr. Closed Meeting was convened, were heard, discussed, and considered. Okay, do we have a second? Second. I would have a motion by Mr. O'Brien, second by Mr. Sheridan, and I'll do an individual poll with Chris. Aye. Ms. Peter. Aye. Mr. O'Brien. Aye. Sheridan. Aye. And the chair both sides. We are now in open session, and we're in our <laughs> board uh, budget work time. Yes. Yeah. Seven ish. Exactly. <laughs> use it, wait, watch how to use that word. Word. Which word? I ain't going to be able to say it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's not coming. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, now we got it. Let me just pull up the budget here. Yeah, Eric, you have it up. Uh, I didn't want us to any particular way you want. Yeah, I'm just going to see. Um, yeah, let me, let me get rid of the video panel. Okay. So, so changes from the last budget meeting. Um, this. So, changes from the last budget meeting. So, we received some additional value from the Commissioner of Revenue. And what it does, you can see here, we were balanced before at zero at, at the budget that was advertised. Now, with some additional uh, taxable values, we have a hundred twenty-one thousand dollar addition. So, so what what basically changed since then? We've got some we've got uh, some additional CO properties, so that gave us sixteen thousand of additional revenue for real estate tax. We got a whopping $114 extra revenue in mobile homes. We got 180,000 addition in um, personal property. And then we've had reductions in business personal property and machinery and tools in, in the revenue associated with that. So all those together, we've got $121,000 surplus from what the board advertised as, as far as the budget goes. Um, you know, a couple things at this point. So if the board remembers and, and, and we can make these changes on the fly, which isn't going to change things dramatically. Remember, as I as as we discussed as part of the, the CIP transfer of the sheriff's vehicles and public works, what I was recommending was pulling the, pulling the funding for two sheriff's vehicles out of this year's budget and putting it towards the public works building. So it's basically a, a swap. Swap in, in in dollars again. Sheriff's vehicles are getting getting funded sooner in this fiscal year versus waiting until the budget start. And we did that just because we're trying to go through that. But from there, and, and they're available. But but from there, I mean, again, I think I think the board and I'm trying to see who is here. Do, Dr. Grex is here. Great. <laughs> um, again, you know, from there, we can go whichever, wherever the board wants to start taking a look at it at this point. I, again, you know, we advertise an 84.5 tax rate, uh, real estate, a 415 personal property uh, rate, and then 290, 290, and $1.90 for um, business personal property and machinery and tools. Um, and uh, I, I did, I know there's some Mr. Fairchild contacted me earlier and he had some questions about um, some of the school stuff. And uh, and I haven't had a chance to look at what she necessarily texted me. So I can't necessarily speak to that right at the moment, but happy to have you discuss with the board, whatever direction they all go. Well, would you like to have yeah, yeah, I think you have the response. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think one of the yeah, and, and Ms. Johnson, 
And so one of the questions, this Mr. Fairchild contacted me earlier, and he was just trying to get an idea of the breakout of the salary stuff for the schools. I said, well, I don't really know kind of what the breakout is. If you go back to the, let me pull up the schools. Um, and while he's pulled up, just to give clarity, it was, and I'm not suggesting we do this, but just as one morsel of information, if we, um, just the increase to seven, just the increase of 7%, what that number is. Yep, and, and I think it's slide 22, might be what you're looking at. So the slide increase of seven is a total of $2,371,570. Thank you. That's the total. That's just to go to seven yeah, percent. Yeah. To go to seven. What when you and I spoke earlier in the text that you haven't yes. seen yet. So the, the figure that we had in there, and I can't remember if it's in this one or not, the, the only figure we've got from the state is associated with what the governor proposed in December. That's the, the template that's been released. And you, you remember his budget didn't include seven, it included five. So the state revenue associated with that is the 1.5. It's one one million four hundred ninety six eight hundred thirty one. The two million that we put in here on slide twenty four probably right there state template yeah. two million. That that is our best estimate of what that template is going to say if seven is approved. And we went with that because both the House and Senate put forth seven percent. So we're we're pretty confident that's going to happen. So that. so so the cost of the seven percent is two million three seventy one. Yeah. And if the schools implement that seven percent. They're estimating they would get a little under 2.1 million from the state to offset that seven percent. Yes. That... So, it, so I guess in, in fact, it's a three hundred thousand dollar cost to implement the seven percent. Right. And then there's... Our, our best estimate. Yeah. And then again, that's just seven. And remember, they also had, they're trying to implement the compensation study mm -hmm. above and beyond that to get the salaries with, with, with their competing localities. And those details are broken out on slide 22. That's the total cost of each of those different scenarios, not including any state revenue. So those total amounts equals all of that equals the 3.7 million, which is the dollar amount right there. Should equal that, I, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Dr. Yes, Dr. Yeah. That's correct. So regarding the seven percent um, minus state funding, please how much? Minus state funding, um, so about four hundred. Well, I was gonna say it's one, it's one point two seven. Yeah, I call it two point four minus two point one. It's about three hundred. That's three round numbers from around three hundred thousand dollars is the county cost, assuming that this is what we get in state revenue for the seven. And that's in the well, when we didn't fully fund. Yeah, you didn't fully. You didn't fully fund. You funded two point. Two two point two fifty, I think, yeah. two million two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. out of their two point six seven four request. So you didn't you you, you didn't fund about you know four hundred thousand, which would be four fifty, the two percent differential. Right? Yeah. Right. So we funded five, and they want seven. Is that asking you enough into that? What you're saying? No, I, I, I don't we've got enough in there for seven right now. Thank. You. Dr. Gretz, is that correct? If we're at 2.2? 2.2, depending on what the board did well, to account for the difference between them. What's the additional funding from the state? You're saying the state, you're guessing you're going to get 2.1 million from? The yes. 3.7? Mm-hmm. And the 3.7 to implement everything. And 2.6 was going to do the 13% and everything else. Yeah, two, yeah. Or 2.6. And the additional staff two, position. Yeah. Correct. But I mean, right. so. 2.6 would have included everything on slide 22. Slide 22. 
Okay. 2.6. I think you mean for, no, 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 go back. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was 2.7. That's 2.7 total, but 2 million of them supplied by the state. But the 2.6, what Dr. Gretz, I believe, is saying is it, with 2.6, it would do everything mm -hmm. that they've asked for. Mm -hmm. Everything. That was their ask. That was the ask. Our but that's 1.2 million above 7%, or 1.257, 1.27. Because they're trying to get their skills. 1.24. Yeah. 44,350. So 2.1.25. Yeah, so this amount right here, the 3,719,350 is the sum of all of those amounts. Plus everything. And with, I guess the point I'm making, yeah, is the sum of all those amounts. Yes. Correct. But again, but above and beyond. What I'm talking about is 2.6 million would have gotten all of that. Would have got yes. And we're we're right now at two two five, mm -hmm. and now so we're only three fifty below that. So 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 I mean I, I guess technically let's let, let's say it this way. Oh, Obviously the board doesn't yeah. choose how the schools allocate the funding, whatever funding they get. But from this two point six, again we're about you're about four hundred thousand dollars short. So there's I guess there's some combination of state and local items on here. That let's just say that the board was choosing, there would maybe be some positions that couldn't be funded. But if you funded what you have now, they could probably implement all of the salary increases, but they're probably not going to be able to implement some of the staff positions that they're requesting. But again, whatever the county provides to them for funding, they determine what that breakup is after that. Because I can't be involved in that conversation if we're trying to go line by line. And, that, and that's, I mean, to me, somebody who doesn't have any intimate understanding of how they came to the numbers other than what they present, I mean, I don't have any way to think of what I, to, to come up with what I think is right and fair without thinking about it line per line. And here's what, you know, I, I'm just pulling anything out of that. These positions, um, if the current budget situation, you know, hopefully they can wait till next year. Well, they could use those funds for anything they want, but that's all I got other than just to pull the number out of the air. So I don't know how it's just been a strange thing for me of trying to figure out how to decide what to fund when there's this much of an increase when you don't have any. You, you're not getting a but but so much depth into it you don't have any control where the money goes once you align and it's just it's it's a weird thing of almost picking in some ways a number out of the air of how much you're gonna a lot which just doesn't seem well we don't pick the number the school board picks the number and they come to us and they say here's what we believe is the number that you know, based on the discussions. And well, I mean, we pick that. either 2.6 or 1.6. No, 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 or... I know, but I'm saying you pick the line by line budget yeah. that they've got here. That's generated by the school board, right? I understand. And so, you know, the school board comes in and asks this amount, they come to us, and if we don't fund the full amount, then they go back to their lives and right. say, we're going to take this out of here, right? Mm -hmm. And so the challenge is almost always, I say the challenge from the perspective of what you're trying to say, I think, is almost always because we can't provide direction in terms of what they are going to pick or not. And in many cases, the first thing they almost certainly will pick will be the certain will be the salary increases. Right. So take that number, which is the big piece, and assume that if you underfund, they're going to take that number to begin with. So they're going to take the other line item and look to come from there. So whether that's yeah. you know technology or whether that's by not hiring a position or by doing whatever, that's what, what ends up happening, which is one of the challenges when you know, you're under when we when we don't meet their full ass, that's one of the challenges. Likewise, you can say, well, but every year they come back and return X amount, you know, mm -hmm. because they're constrained by their budget. So are they really utilizing it? And arguments are made regularly that say, well, doesn't that mean that you overpaid them to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. But you're talking about an, uh, uh, 
relatively small yeah, percentage. But yeah, if you look at it as a percentage of their total budget, one, one to two. They, yeah, they have to do the same thing percent. that we have to do. They have to be conservative because they don't want to have to come back to us in May and say we can't pay our bills. They can't need another three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand. They can't pull money out of anywhere once they're done. They're done. And that's, that's how that's we build that That's general. a felony for me. So, so if they're asked for two point six, you know, you yeah. know, we make that calculation of saying, well, we'll give them, right. you know, we only want we only want to raise the tax rate or whatever by this much. I, I asked Eric yeah. to do to go for how much the board has given back uh, for five years. I said to look up in five last five years, how much has the board turned back to us? All right, pull um, that Because that goes into our fund sometimes. The general fund, that's how we build that's our general fund because fund we don't charge excess years. taxes. Yes. I mean, so we could be like the counties yeah. that I've talked to from around the state mm -hmm. that when they have 14% jump in their appraisals, don't change your tax rate. And that so, all goes to the general fund. So, so we voters. try to mm -hmm. adjust it to where. Right. And I actually asked <laughs> staff to produce something that I don't think. Have or haven't yeah, we haven't had a chance to pull everything. Like I said, here was one that was talked about by Ms. Booker about the what was approved, what was amended, what was actually expended. Mm -hmm. So basically, at the end of the year, what what was not spent, what was right. returned back to the county. So this column, unspent mm -hmm. funds. Right. Now, don't look at 2023. I, I looked down and went, holy yeah. cow, I didn't put anything in uh, okay. Again, we haven't done any any transfers. So okay. basically, look through 2018 through 2022. Mm -hmm. So those are return funds back to the county every mm -hmm. fiscal year. And then what was requested mm -hmm. from those funds? So they only requested in 2018 165,000 back. Well, I'm I mean, but they only had 427,000 to get back. Yeah, right. But they didn't request it years. Yeah. And the next year, they haven't requested anything back. So, 2021. So, you see, 2020 and 2021, it was COVID. Yeah. 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 There was leftover money. Right. There was a lot left over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one thing, if I could just add this the figure that you see for 20, this past fiscal, the 1.3 million, mm -hmm. you, you all will remember, I'm sure, that the House and Senate versions were. One was 1.2 million in additional revenue, and the other was 500,000. I mean, it was a dramatic swing, and they didn't resolve that until right before July. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I remember that. And had the other one been approved, we would have been really glad we had that one. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. <laughs> yeah. That well, I mean, you know, well, I was sitting in class, and that guy talking to us about budget. Y'all don't have to have it done until the 30th of June. <laughs> Laughed at him. So, yeah, you're not, you're not a supervisor. Like yeah, and, and, and just real quickly, one other thought on that to what Sheridan was saying is, you know, that that as as our budgeting process has become more refined and more accurate and more detailed, part of what's changed is that there's been less money that comes back to the fund. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, we've had, you know, some some bonuses that help help to restore our fund balance. But we were a couple of years back and if it weren't for COVID, probably, you know, we were stretching kind of quote unquote what our fund balance, you know, beyond the 12% was available to us. Right. And that's where, you know, the conversation that other counties have where they they just they don't do it. They just don't change their rate. They absorb all that during the equalization period. They use that to build their fund balance, mm -hmm. which in turn, you could argue, helps to to uh, lessen the curve of changes. Right? That is the piggy bank they have. So when they have to go build a new school, they're pulling monies out of a fund mm -hmm. balance that's substantially large. So um, that's looking down the future when you're doing that. And in this case, we're we're not doing that. We're going from 88 cents to 84 and a half cents. If we plug that four and a half cents back in, we would have another 1.6 million or so that would be going into fund balance. It's 87. 87. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Whatever. You get the point, right? It's only two and a half. Mm -hmm. only 700,000. Or yeah, 900,000. 900, yeah. yeah. 
So is that that's that's Thank that, you. yeah. Right. Um some of the items that are in the school board's budget also are mandatory. Mandatory. They're mandatory expenses that we would have to do before before the board ever thought about doing salaries. You have to be able to do that. And do we don't have those broken out, do we? Uh you do. The literacy curriculum is mandated through the Literacy Act. We have to adopt that next year. I put a placeholder of 280 just past curriculum. It could be 350, it could be 250. Maybe I should have asked it a different way. As far as we don't have a grouping of which items are mandated, do we? Can't remember. Well, I, I think you do. Slide 25, I believe, will do that. Yeah. So if you if you go back up to 24, they're not indicated on here which of those are mandatory. So what was it? 84,000. Literacy, English, and then... And the, the assistant principal is not really... So 100, 280... I, I had commentary with that, but I, was saying, I can go into that again. I wouldn't say it's mandatory. But... 20, so 22? What's that? 2.674. I mean... It... If you took out just the thank God, I hate to do that because our, especially the second one, our people are so deserving. Yeah. Um, but it's 1.43. And I imagine most of that 1.43 is probably, I mean, some of it's asked for positions, but what are you saying is 1.43? It's what's left over if you take your 1.244350. One point four three zero is left over, and they asked for two point six seven four. All right, is that am I making any sense? No. Well, take away the two bottom asks right there on twenty two. So the take six, away those two. Take away the six thirty three okay. and the six eleven. One four three zero. One million four hundred thirty thousand is what's left over to do everything else. So part of that is half twos. Part of its positions, part of its right. asking for insurance. Because I'm telling you, they already pay a boatload for insurance. That's the reason I'm not on. I'd say it that way, but if you have a family, it's a mortgage bank. If you have a small house. In fact, at one point in time when I lived in Goochland, it's bigger than my mortgage bank. <clears throat> So I, I, does that make any sense of what I just said, Chris? Does that help break it down? Yeah. I mean, that leaves 1.43 for everything else that's for, including the 400,000 to take another 400,000 off of that because that's the insurance, the uh, the 7%. So you're 1 million. 1 million covers everything else that they ask for. So, anyway. That's my two cents worth. As, as close as I can explain it in layman's style. How much of that one million do you think is new position of dollar? Do you know? Have an idea of how many new positions were there? Five? In this budget? Yes. With the school board approved? Correct. Um, the slide you want me to go to? The, right there is fine. The English language learner. That's the bottom of the white line. Right that is, that's new. And required. 84,000. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, our English is a second language group, is growing ESL. The coordinator of mental health right above that is new, and the instructional assistant above that is new. And those ones are not required. No. And then the second line, the assistant principal, would be new. Yeah. The, the, the reason I said it was. I just refresh your memory about this. So last year, we were legally required to have two, to have an additional administrator at Central, one at Central, one in uh, West Central. We worked around that by essentially getting rid of one of those, just having one school. The conversation during all that was, we, we don't want to change the way this is structured. We'll add the next administrator next year. So it's not really required. Had we not done that, it would be required. 
I mean, after what that a year is. of a principal and assistant working in that large school, four year olds all the way up, I think you probably got that 12 kindergarten all the way up to your second grade, is a tremendous amount of work. I blessed them if they did that in yeah. a year. They need that assistance. These are little people, <laughs> a lot of them. So, oh, I well, see how you can take that away. There's one thing I'll say if we talk about the SOQs, and I brought this up the last time, and I apologize if I did not get that to y'all, and I should have. The SOQ position, it's one for 600 students, I think, for assistant principal. If I'm correct, I got it written down in the car. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, you, how are you going to know who they are? That's why we got to get on there. Eight elected officials to have to have correct. I mean, the, the, the numbers comes out of this budget. Yeah. Well, the numbers are just astronomical of what they reduced it. It's not just eight. I mean, like I said, you know, when you're talking about, it might have been three, you no, know, councils for 300. There's one council for 300 students. And you get to know 300 kids in one year, individually. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do a possible thing. So the school budget is short by what? 400,000? Uh, right now, in the budget, the board has 2,200,000. Yeah, but we had a placeholder somewhere. Yeah, there About was 60,000 that was. Um, a little place We put it back in the U.S. contingency, I believe. Yeah, sixty-two thousand. Yeah. I mean, but my only thing I tell you right now that I struggle with, and that's the thirteen percent and things of that nature. I mean, I just, but I know that those guys struggle with. It. Who struggles? The people that they have listed down there needing the 13 percent. You say struggle with not having it? Correct. If you look at the salary scale, I mean, mm -hmm. it yeah. sounds like it, what you're saying is it sounds like a big increase, but when you look at what their salaries where, the, where that's going, really, but in other places, it is a larger, larger type of increase. Well, keep in mind the 13 is a cap, correct? That, that's not being given to a broad swing of people. We're using that methodology right there and, and capping it. And looking at, I don't know. We have to ask local them. composite index, LCI. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I apologize. I told y'all I had a great sheet. I showed it to Mr. Dolan. I did not get copies to y'all. But it shows us sitting in the middle of three mm -hmm. of the counties that have the greatest ability to pay. Right. And now that are flush with cash. Yeah, and now that they we're, we're at 40%. Right. The neighbor to the east is twice mm -hmm. has twice the ability. Right. They're at 80%. Right. Well, that's yeah. and, you, and, and to our west, or if I remember correctly, they're the ninth highest paid elementary teachers in the state of Virginia, including North. Who are you talking about? Of that list, the chart that they gave us, it's just a graph. And it says, well, we throw out the outliers because they're just outlandish. Two of the top nine that they throw out, for sure, still not more. And we can't compete with that. We could. We'd be looking at a ridiculous saturation. Mm -hmm. Well, you just look at the Virginia in comparison to national, to the whole state. Well, yeah, but I'm, 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 well, I'm just, I'm going apples and apples. The best chart that I've ever, or best statistic I ever heard somebody say was at the board of directors meeting. He said, the guy goes in, Virginia is 37th in the state of Virginia. Wait, Virginia. So, I mean, 37th in the United okay. States, lowest. And being the pain in the butt that I am, what happens if you take away Northern Virginia that gets a COVID? Mm -hmm. 47. Mm -hmm. There are only three below the place. Right. So, I mean, you know, right. 
we can make whatever we want to. But what we afford to make is well, I mean, Virginia is like number five in the country for economic and, and business, right? We're trying to work on that. And but, yet, yeah. we're number 37 for schools. And to your point, we would be number 47 if you took out Northern Virginia, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is pretty pathetic, honestly. Yeah. You know, it really is. So, uh, so I, I mean, I, you know, the, the, we've got uh, just kind of driving down to the point here, we've got 121,000 plus 60,000. Yeah, yeah. Does the board have right. appetite? All right. Does that just want it or does the board not want to do that? You know, does it want to reduce it? You know, I mean, we're kind of beat, beating, beating okay. this around, right? So, All right. What are you saying? Uh, what I'm saying is, it's a hard time, you know, outbidding our neighbors. Hey, what? I think we buy all four of them we can choose sometimes. I didn't hear you. Well, uh, oh, I, mean, I don't understand what you're saying. Are you saying you want to cut the two million? Is that what you're suggesting? No, no. Okay. I'm open to suggestions besides raising. Besides raising, raising it. Okay. So I'm not. I mean, I would say that we spent 108,000 of the 121,000. I recognize that <laughs> it's for this current fiscal year and coming out of fund balance. But in essence, come July one, it's just a it's just changing the math from one line to the other. So even though we have 121,000 and 62,000, you know, you're really looking at. You know, one hundred eight thousand of that. No, so, we keep the rate till we got I, I, I mean, I feel personally, I'm, you know, I feel this is an enormous, uh, you know, um, it was an enormous ask to begin with, um, but I think it was a justified ask. If the board is comfortable providing more, I'm not going to argue about it. I, I would be okay voting for this budget. Yeah, you know, I would be okay voting for this budget. But if there's, if the board comes out and says. We got a, another hundred and eighty-two thousand dollars, and and it's halfway. Then you know I'm not going to vote against that because I don't I don't think that I I think that what's going to happen, and I think what the schools are expecting is that there'll be a compromise on the budget, and that that differential will probably be met anyhow. And so I think this is a, a year. That's a guess. I could be wrong, but this will be a year in which the 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 schools will really be able to implement their full plan that they want to put in place. Um, and if they if they implement that plan, we'll get some money back. The school board has already said that they would do that. They, if they got money above the two point six, at least one member has said that. I can't speak for the other members, um, but you know it sounds like that you know that's something that we built and worked with the school board to create a, a pattern of you know trust in between you know what they say and what we do. Um, and I and I think that you know I'm optimistic that that the the legislature will come to a compromise budget which will help to meet this full budget that they're asking for and to the degree that it isn't fully met by us it will be met by that compromise and to the degree that is more they will return that excess balance that's kind of my viewpoint on this so you think we should give them the full amount is that what you're no saying? no no i'm saying i'm comfortable with this i mean in in essence what we're saying is we can take the hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars and sixty-two thousand dollars and reduce from eighty-four and a half cents to eighty-four cents, right? We could do that, or we could take the hundred and twenty-one thousand and the sixty-two thousand and we'll give it to the schools, schools, right? What I'm saying is that my feeling in looking at this budget, if the rest of the board is kind of on the same place, is you know that 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 there's a very good chance that the compromise. That will be met by the state legislature will fill that four hundred thousand dollar gap, maybe exceed it, and that the school board has come back and said that if it goes above the two point six one member, well, one member again, I said that you know, but I think again, there's you know, well, you said, one member, right? Okay. One member, but then you said the school board. I'm stand corrected. That's fine. Okay. One John B. I stand corrected, but but I what I'm saying is that we have traditionally worked hard to. Establish a pattern with the school board when 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 we're when we're talking about the same saying. So what we hear you saying is, if you get an, end up with a budget of three million, you're going to give us that four hundred thousand dollars back, right? You know, now we can't make them do that, but if they don't do that, then we'll remember that, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll remember that. You know, so you know, I mean, and we do, and we do remember those things, right? Um, so I, I mean, I, I'm comfortable with the relationship and where we are. And I think that that we are meeting ninety percent of the ask, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, if it's important to the other members to try to reduce from 84 cents to, I mean, 84 and a half cents to 84 cents, so be it. I mean, I think that's okay. Um, but I mean, you know, as, as Mr. Sheridan's pointed out, there are counties that don't change their rate at all. They just take all that money and put it back in front of them. Yeah. And so, so we have two, you know, so we have, so do you all hear two decisions that we're talking about? We haven't heard two? any decision. We've heard enough. Pardon? Pardon? We haven't heard any decision, ma'am. No, no, no. Been... Decisions to be made. There are two. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Oh. There are two. You can't have two decisions. No. Maybe I worded it wrong. Oh, but we have two. If I'll we take those, take I've the 83, the whatever, not, and put it to the school, or we take it off of the tax rate. So you're talking about the 120 yes, and, and the 62. Yeah, no, it's 183,967 dollars. Which the either we take that off of the tax rate or we add it to the school's ask. And to Mr. Sheridan's point, you could take that off of the personal property instead of the really the tax rate if you wanted to take that. $180,000. Where, wherever it comes from. Right, wherever. Wherever. And I think there's an argument to be made that we just spend $180,000 on a fund balance to put the legend in on the ball fields, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a good argument to be made there. Yeah. So this, all of this discussion is about $180,000. No, ma'am. It's about where you want the budget to end up, ma'am. Yeah, it's well, but it's a piece. It's a piece. It's a piece of that discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Chris, what do you think? I, I'm just, I mean, we don't have, we don't have to make you have more questions, week, right? You have more questions and answers. If, if you have more questions, no, no, not, not necessarily you, questions to ask somebody thoughts. right here. I, I'm just, I'm still putting it together. I, again, the difference is, it just sounds so strange to me, but not that it could be any different. How do you all feel about? What about this number? When we vote on the budget for the county, we're voting based upon line items and we have to make a decision where that money goes. How do you feel about 2.4, 2, 1.8? It's just, it's, um, it just seems against financial intelligence. And, and I'm not saying, I know that's the system, I'm not speaking against what anybody does or, or questioning. It just, it's like a, a feel of how much money you should give. It just doesn't seem to fit into the finance. Um, well, but isn't, isn't that what the school board is doing? I mean, well, they, they know their line items and they know what they're right. going to, well, potentially, they, they know what they're going to do with the money once they get it. Right. But then, I mean, what I'm saying is, in the same way we're going through a budgeting process right now yeah. for everything else. They go through that budgeting process for the schools, right? right? And so, you know, there are a number of there are a number of counties that implement a uh, you know category, you know, line item, if you would. It's only five categories, I believe. So you yeah. do, you know, instruction, mm -hmm. technology, etc. Right. So they have that categorical budget. So some some county boards vote on that categorical budget line item. That's not the way but we've got implemented here. The majority do it the way we're doing it right now. But what what I think I hear you saying you're struggling with is that somehow or another you're supposed to be second guessing what the school board is doing and what they've done with their budget, right? And, well, and, that's and, what I'm, not saying you you and I'm not saying you specifically because yeah. this is something that I always say is, you know, are we are we shopping a tax rate or are we meeting the needs of the county, right? So that's that's the challenge. And I, a lot of times it's a, it's you know politics is already compromised. You know, the art of compromise is okay. You know, you feel this way, I feel this way, yeah. you know, she feels that way, and the votes come out according. So, you, you put it a good way, and you have said that, that way before shopping a tax rate for meeting the needs of the county. And I, I just don't like shop, shopping a tax rate. You know, I, I said a couple of meetings ago, we were talking about you were mentioning being competitive with other counties and so on. And if you remember, I said, I don't. I don't really care what the other counties are doing. I, I want to find what's right for us to spend what's needed and spend that money, which of course I don't have the, the ability, but to a certain extent to do that when it comes to how much money we're allotting to school, although it's such a huge amount of money. 
And so it's just a, I don't know, I, I'm probably over talking it because there's nothing that's going to get it passed where it does come down to a fuel where you are stopping the rate. And um, you know, how much can the taxpayer bear? But it's just, um, it just seems odd. It doesn't seem. So, again, I don't know if the board wants to make a decision. Let me just bring up two other items that were brought to my attention, too. That's budget related. It's one small, one's less small. I'm sorry. Smaller and smaller. Yeah, no, no, smaller and small and big. Small so, and big. So, one, um, we received a request from the ARC to get funding again in this budget. And if you remember, the board approved three thousand dollars last year. Now that's not in this budget, and this request came in after all the budget requests had already been. You want me to talk about it? Sure. I mean, it, it's in our district. It's what we did last year to allow them to pay somebody to cut the grass, and they cut the grass at not only there but it cut me through. And I think this is. I got an email from Mr. Bowles and passed forwarded on to Mr. Dahl. And they're just asking for that again because they have the four elections there and things of that nature. That's three thousand dollars. Three thousand. That's three thousand just to cover grass for whatever. Didn't they, didn't they say last year that they were? I don't remember that they were thinking that was going to be a one-time funding or. There was yeah, some that, some discussion. I think that was the conversation. So, so there was sort of a conversation, but I don't think they're running as often. As they need to, but then we just would have to accept that's a yearly line. I mean, I mean why, what, it, what's I don't, know what, the, I don't know what the cost is. For I mean, the it's three thousand uh, dollars a year. Yes. What's what the what, year? what's the cut? How much is each cut? How many has it? Well, that's what I'm trying to much? figure out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get into how much it costs them to cut the grass. Like, uh, that's... I mean, again, we've got a, we've got an MOU. We provided money in the past for upgrades to the building to yeah. use the building from from elections, senior senior stuff. While we're talking about, it, I will say uh, this one has been brought up also, and it may be something where we look into a generator for that building in case during elections power goes out if we have a thunderstorm. Because if power goes out, well, wherever they vote, if they vote in 14 in school, does that already have a generator outside for that, a backup generator? Uh, I'm sorry, where? 14 community center? No, we don't have All right. that. Well, that's, and that's where they vote, correct? Yeah, it's where they AM, vote. AM, um, Antioch. We should probably, for election cycles, just rent a couple of generators. So I mean, we have some generators. The only reason that well, that was brought up was because we have talked about using it as an emergency shelter. And it well, let's doesn't get, help if you don't have Let's get back power. to what we were okay. saying. What about I, the ramp, handicap ramp? Didn't they want a handicap ramp? Did they we did do that? that Somebody did it? I think. Don't hold me to it. Um, I don't know. I think that was done last year. I, I, I want to go back to we the, don't I, I feel like the context was that that was a last year thing, that, that it was that it was not going to be reoccurring. I told the gentleman I would ask, yeah. or pass it on to Mr. Bell to ask. But can we and finish the school think, before we do that? Mike? Sure, yeah. I, I, well, I just, I, the other thing is, like, what's the big one? Well, the only other thing is, this This was brought up by by some of the, the chiefs about the burn building. Oh, Again, okay. you, you know, it was, it was brought to my attention that, well, look, there's, there's no money in the CIP for the burn building to finish the burn building. And 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 my, my question was, I mean, you're right. I mean, normally those those requests come from, from FRA, but you know, we've been working on this burn building for a while. And so we have a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar grant. And you know, November, if something's not done with moving forward with the burn building, most likely we're probably not going to be able to get another um, extension to the grant but as as we discussed with the board the burn building is probably we've got a meeting coming up where we've got another vendor we're going to talk to but again the last kind of proposal for that is it's about 1.1 1.2 million it's like way out of and it's so we're about you know call it 
850, 800,000 short. And originally it was going to be six or 800,000. Because we were probably about 750, 800, yeah. but yeah. So, so the next meeting that we have, that's next. The next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. And is that budget period? So, yes. That's, so, so that's, next, oh, next that's Wednesday mm -hmm. are the two public hearings. Mm -hmm. And then there's time for budget discussion after that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't imagine that the public hearings should take very long. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just public hearings on the budget. And, and if no one comes to speak about the budget, well, those are going to be some pretty quick public hearings because it's just two. And so there is time for budget discussion. But but really, I would prefer that we have the budget put to bed by next week if we can, if, if we know where we're going to be. Right. So, so I would say decide next week or decide tonight. No, no. I would say if we had a decision by next week yeah. after after we have the public hearings, yeah, that then then we can put something in in the board package for the following week to act. You know, to, yeah, that goes up. Well, that may be the third meeting when we do that's, the final. That's when you would have. Yeah, you April adopt the budget. is when you when you adopt the budget. So what what additional information do you need, Chris? Nothing I'm going to get sitting here tonight. So uh, do you I'm need done. to sit with, go to the um, school board office and sit with with um, Brenda and Dr. Gratz and go through nine, five, nine? I think that would be. Um, and, and going back to this budget and schools and us working together, I think the most we've ever given is 4.5 since I've been on the board. And that was our first year when it got slashed the year before. We came back and added 1.5 million the next year. I don't remember us going higher than that. We've been over a million once or twice, like 1.1 1 .1 or 1.3. Yeah. The most of that has been like 700,000, 900,000. And when the ARPA money came, it was nothing. We didn't go up. Yeah, I think that the 1.5 million was still, you know, not, not like a million short of they were cut. So. Well, it, it, like I said, but yeah, you know, we bit off a big chunk. Yeah, we did. And that was huge. Yeah, and now we're, we're looking at 1.1 above that. Yeah, or, I think which I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think. 775,000 above that. Right. I don't, just, I, I don't. Food, that's just food for thought. I'm not yeah. trying to start an argument or anything. No, no, no I'm not trying to start that. But I, I mean, if your point is, if your point is, is this going to be the new pattern that they come to us every year for 2.2 million? No, that's not my that's point. I'm just making a statement. Yeah. That's all I did. Yeah. I don't I don't sit here and try to make points. Why can't we focus. um in in the future maybe have more more history of what we have done in the past so we can have a clear picture and stop? You know, we have to guess at what year did we do this and what year did we do the other. Let's have that information in front of us. All right. it, it also depends on the school board too. Yeah, no, I'm talking about yeah, that. No, well, well, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, the school board may choose. We have a school board that comes back next year and says that their budget is going to be 600000 uh, Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not looking for next year. So. I'm looking for what's the history. Right. And we've been doing well, the history got years. thrown a loop like four years ago. And everything got. Yeah. Screwed up for lack of a better so word. So we're not making what we're not making any decisions tonight on this one hundred and twenty-one thousand nine hundred sixty-seven and or wait. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what we can do for next week, if you want. I mean, one as I discussed, we can do the flip flop on the CIP from the sheriff's vehicles to, to public works, but again, that's a mm -hmm. that's wash. Yeah. Um, Again, if, if if the board wants to do the three thousand to the ARC, you know, you could pull it out of this contingency money. If the board wants to fund what is the potential for the burn building, now that's a different story because we would have to. Because remember, we can't increase the total budget. So if we're going to fund that, you're going to have something else is going to have to. Yeah, but I mean that, that, that you can't because the budget has to decrease at this point. The total budget amount has to increase. But if I don't know, what I don't understand is if if the burn building was a priority, why would that be part of their CIP request, and why wouldn't we be looking at that? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess to play devil's advocate on their side too, maybe maybe from their standpoint, maybe they're waiting to see if it's going to be 
it's just going to be funded as part of the part of the project. I mean, really, all we can do at this point, we're going to meet with with this other vendor here. I think it's coming up next week sometime to hear if they have any thoughts or ideas. I mean, and maybe we'll get a better idea at that point. And maybe ultimately, I mean, again, we've put it out for bid a couple times, and and we either have gotten most recently no responses at all, or it's just been it's been it's been expensive. So. So, so maybe by next, I'll have to check. I think the meeting is early next week, so I'll have to see if there's mm -hmm. any updates from that point. But, you know, at some point we're going to have to make a move on it, or or we just need to say, look, grant funds need to go away. Yeah. So, Dr. Grace, do you have anything you want to say to us this morning? No, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I don't have anything additional. Okay. I appreciate you having me here. Appreciate all the thoughtful consideration. Is, I know it's a difficult thing. Is there anything the board wants staff to come back with? I know, Mr. O'Brien, you had a couple of things. We've got those written down to pull that. I mean, is, is there any other information that? Well, one thing I was going to say, going back to the burn building, and, and two things. The ARC Hall, they asked for three. I think they'd be extremely happy if we gave you just enough to cover the grass cut. 1,000 or 1,500 or something of that nature. Because what happens is if this somebody, whoever's free, drives their lawnmower from wherever to drive up there to go do it. And, um, and the second thing is, and I mentioned this before, but reaching out to some of our bigger companies or perhaps even a new company um, and see if they would be willing to help get a tax write off, or I don't know what you call it, pro bono to do some of the dirt movie because. Excavation was huge for that project. Um, come at the burn building? Burn building. Yeah. I think an excavation was like 250,000 of the 1.1. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we, or if they do it at a reduced rate, I mean, I'm sitting in the back of my head going, Mr. Cox might be a big guy to talk to because I, mean, I bet you he had something to do with Gucci and getting there. That's good. That's a good idea. If I recall correctly on the burn building, the reason the discussion was this was going to be the last time is because it was suggested that be part of the quote unquote nonprofits ask, you know, for a budget for that line item. I'm um, sorry, you said burn building? Not the, I didn't mean the burn building, the ARC. Oh, okay, yeah. Because that came out of line, and I think Chris brought up, well, why isn't this part of the other ask? It was kind of a last minute thing. So I think that's why the conversation was this going to be the last time because the thinking was, that they would come back and make the formal request at that point in time, and then the budget could have been the. the well, one of the things that's said, I think, I think that's what happened. Why, why that, how that conversation went. Which, if we do it this time, they better do it next time because you know. Yeah, you know, but I mean, there's before I was on. How much money did you all give? Thirty thousand. We gave thirty thousand to renovations, and that was because we we'll use it for elections. Then it came back and it's more money because we use it for elections and now it's more money because you use it for elections. I wonder if y'all would have given them $30,000 if you had known that it'd be $3,000 a year every year after. I suspect not. And, you know, I asked them last year, I said, well, what about Three Chop Community Center? What about the VFW Hall? These different ones, why aren't we then giving them money? I don't know how we can give thirty thousand dollars that was for us using it for elections, but then start to fund part of the yearly operations money for one and not everybody else who asked. I think it'd be a different conversation if the county didn't give that big chunk of money. Well, maybe we should have thought about the place needed to grass cut and put it in the project. It was one, one and time. I'd have to come back to ask for yeah. that. But the thirty thousand, yeah, and the thirty thousand, we didn't, we knew what we were going to use that for. Air the roof, the windows, the roof, air conditioning. You had no yeah. air conditioning, so the people so, were there for the right. elections in June. Mm -hmm. Floor in the kitchen suffered. Sure. Yeah, the no, floor, and there was a lot of kitchen was given away. And there was a lot of. Water. I'd have probably yeah. voted for it. Uh, I'm not saying it was a bad spend. And they used to have volunteers to cut it to four. Yes, and we don't have that now, so that, um, they, so that changed good. the situation. Changed, so that's why they when they, FLD didn't have a mm -hmm. bus driver, I drove the bus. Yeah, yeah. 
save them a hundred bucks. Okay. So, so nothing the board wants us to come back. Anything with. else you want to come back with? Ms. Johnson, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I very much appreciate Madam Chair the opportunity. Um, I won't be here next week because we have our own meeting, so I won't be able to speak at the public hearing. And I would just like to remind you, 7% sounds wonderful, and it is wonderful, but it doesn't improve our position at all. Everybody's going to give 7%, at least 7%. If this is what the state comes up with, that doesn't improve our position relative to anybody. Mm -hmm. That's all I'd like to say. So thank you. Thank you. Maybe you need to bring that shot back. That's a good shot. Um, you may not may I think add it to the Somebody's unmuted. Wait a minute. Five. You you compared it to five counties. I oh yes. Yeah. Four. We started with nine. City. City. Yeah. Started with nine, including us. And right. We went to five, including us, four others. Yeah. Yeah. We need to have one city, three counties, two of which are in the top nine. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, I, I, nine. you can bring that chart back right. next time. I mean, nine. It's, all nine. It's, 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 uh, you know, I mean, I think a lot's been and, said about that. But, and we know. need to also know how is the, um, like, you've been to index. It's local, decided. Uh, I, I, I will go inside inches. and get that sheet and bring it to um, Mr. Dahl. Well, we'll make it we'll, we'll, I'll grab it and we can make copies. And, make it yeah. and it, it just really does explain what you've been trying to explain to me before, especially with the SOQs. It's got everything written down. And I mean, to look at that, it, and does it, it just makes you scratch your head and go, but, um, you with these numbers? But Mike, does it tell um, how they come up with the index? That oh, they told me that. On it. We went through that in we class. Had, Dr. Vex, you know, I gotta we need to know it. what those factors we've been up. Dr. We, we, knows, we, yeah, um, you probably have a history of how else have gone up. It has been like 3.6, 3.8, NASTA 4. And that's because of our ability to pay. Yeah. And what is that Correct. based on? It's a it's a really convoluted. It's, yes, yes, it is. But at least it's a formula that we need to understand. I mean, we may not totally understand. I, 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 I don't think I do that. The best thing I can tell you is this, Miss Miss uh, They showed us one, and every one of them that had a dark blue, yeah, point eight percent, either had a lot of federal money coming in because right. they had bases of plan. prison or power plants, <laughs> and they literally said that. Yeah. Oh. No. Mm-hmm. But but that's what we just would it would it take much but maybe it's a lot too much study to add Cumberland and Buckingham into that chart. Uh, we definitely can do it. I think trying to do it by next Wednesday when everybody's off this week for spring break would probably be impossible. Yeah, it's not something that's good on the internet. Yeah. 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 Um, but maybe not. I mean if it's if it's if it's important to you to see it, we'll get it done. Well, I appreciate that. I, I guess I would take your discretion on what you find out how much effort it would be. If it'd be a lot of effort, don't. If it wouldn't be that much, then it'd be, to me, it's good comparison data to have. But I don't, you are working hard. I'm, I'm, De definitely could do it. Certain positions wouldn't be difficult to find. It's when you get into the weeds of some of the leadership positions, yeah. like that, it can be difficult. Um, so when you did, you said you started off with nine, including Savannah, Culpepper, Green, yeah. Buckingham, Cumberland. We did Charlottesville, Albem Albemarle, Nelson, Green, Orange, Madison, Louisa, and Savannah, and not Goochum? And Goochum, uh, yes. But you didn't go south of the river at all, except for Nelson? No. And and you only compared teacher salaries. No, we did them all. Yeah. And you did custodians. Yeah. And if you look through that book that you all gave us, you can look at yeah, every 12 position. months, 10 months custodian. But most of those positions, you have to work in the county for 30 some years before you even get the 30,000 bar when you retire. So you start off really low. And some of, some of them low is it two years in a row. It used to be three. You got the same style three years in a row. Mm -hmm. So now maybe two. 
So it's a lot of little things that you have to you have to look at to see how people struggle. A lot of those people can't wouldn't even be able to go in Colonial Circle. Wouldn't be able to afford it. And they're working 12, 10 months, 12 months. They don't make the salary. Why wouldn't they be able to go into colonial service? Because they don't make they don't make they don't make the money. They would may not make they the would money. fall in the range. They would fall. Just, just, so we've got well, to, if they're below if they're that 60% or below, they're gonna they yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. They may not even they gonna, would help somebody else because they'd be yeah. about 20 to 25. Right. So the, they, they would leave them room to play with the numbers. That makes sense. Oh, and so let's, uh, to me, let's adjourn and come back and make a decision. I'm That's not it. ready to call for an adjournment yet. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I can always make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, we finished. I'm just messing with you, Chris. No, gotcha. um, you all finished, everybody? We know what we're going to do, and we'll be back and have at it again. Well, All right. I mean, I'm sitting here, uh, just sitting here with my own math. When you just look at the school system, 1.43, right, yeah, 1.43 gets you to 7%. Anything we do above that allows them to spend it where they deem necessary. And to Ms. Johnson's point, 1.43 keeps us exactly. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I understand that. And I, I'm agreeing. I'm just saying. Anything we do above that you know, I, I, is stuff where they can put the money where they deem necessary. Well, that's, that's somewhat a good point. point. So actually, it's probably more like 1.7 because I know I'm probably wrong. But anyway, I'm just throwing out numbers. Yeah, right. And what he just said, Dr. Grex and Ms. Perry ought to be thinking about what he said. What about that other, you know, what do you want? Dr. Grex, I'm in the ballpark. Correct. For, for say it again, what do you mean? Taking the the two numbers that you showed on twenty two, this one point two four four. That's the, the one million two hundred forty four thousand three hundred fifty. The two six hundred thousand dollars. If you took that off of the two point six seven four, if you, which I know I'm not exactly right, but I'm close. If you took those away, then anything we go above. We'll say one, I probably guess 1.7. Use the ability to adjust something. Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm honestly not yeah. sure I'm following. You have to get rid of it. Just take on my back, page 22. Right. Take the two things, oh, the, the, the two additional. In, just and, just looking at the teachers. Right. Well, well no, just looking at the teachers, teachers. and the instructionals and then everything. Or is, I think uh, I'm trying. So he's he's saying these two numbers right here, the six thirty three and the six. Okay, I, I, I'm wrong right. because that's just that's not that's the total cost of doing the the other scales. So the first the first is the total cost of doing teacher teacher, teacher scale. scale, just teachers. Just the teachers. second one is okay. So that's not seven percent everywhere. Well, take everything I just said. That includes that includes seven. seven. That includes it. So. so Two million four seventy five includes seven percent for everyone and whatever it takes. and everything. No, it says teachers. It's yeah. it's included That's in the there. Um, the difference would be if somebody. So, for example, look at the bottom. Okay. Our methodology was to bring each band to fourth out of fifth. Okay, so bring them to be not last, and then to move the when we move them on the band. We use that methodology that I described before that was kind of taken from what you did, what the county did last year. We give years of service in that in that position and put and put them on where no one got more than 13. But if someone got less than seven, they would get less than seven in this model. We built this before that happened. So there is enough funding in what the board passed and what you're looking at here to give everybody seven. But this model wasn't built on giving everybody at least seven. It was built on making sure that each band was not last 
moving people using the methodology where they go and making sure nobody got more than 13. If somebody was closer to being fourth out of fifth, they may not get seven or 13, they may get four. Or in this case, it would be at least five. Is this one was built by the government? Okay. I hope I'm and, and I guess to some degree to, to Sharon's point, seven percent is well, you know, in essence, we're stuck doing to a certain degree. And the differential is four point three five percent if you look at the teachers because you're going from seven percent to eleven point three five percent. So now they're coming back and saying, and hey, we'd like to be more competitive. So we're asking for an additional four percent. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way you think about yeah. it. Yeah. I was looking at it as two parts at the bottom were different. Right. It's, it's just the different categories. Okay. All right. So are we done. ready for uh, to adjourn? Can we have Still a made. Okay. Are you ready, Rosa? I'm ready. Good. I've already made the motion, so I'm second. Like second it. I second. All right. Most by Mr. Can we have discussion, please? <laughs> by um, Mr. Fairchild and no discussion to be on adjourned. Well, we need to vote. No, we're not voting. <laughs> oh, so we're still in seven. Oh, I, not, I, I was, hey, let me tell you something. I could have made the motion. Next time, well, I'm going to make the motion in the second.